Good evening. This is Linda Evans with End Time News, Prophecy Coming to Pass Before Our Eyes. This is going to be part two of the diverse kinds of tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That is the last um, gift, including interpretation, of course. If you saw last week's part one, then you can pick up where we left off along with me. Um, the only thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to take you a few steps further into this, this particular gift because there's a couple of things that I think you will find of interest. First, I would like to read um, from Acts 2, even though I asked you to read Acts 2 last week, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 14, because it gives us so much information about the subject. Um, plus, I gave you also a lot of other scriptures that you could apply to this. So in Acts chapter 2, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was finally come, they, talking about the disciples, were all with one accord in one place. And this is something that Jesus had told them to do, the disciples, once he had departed and went to, be, uh, went to heaven. Uh, he told them to all go into the upper room and um, until they were endued with power. So if you miss part one of the this teaching, then you really need to see that so that you can kind of know what, what's going on here. So anyway, um, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, I have a an experience that I'd like to share with you before we go any further that will possibly help you to understand this a little better. When I, God had told me several years ago to go to this meeting where they were a guest speaker was uh, coming in, a very well-known speaker, and some friends had invited me to go, so I went, and um, anyway, I sat on the back row, uh, like a lot of people do when they're in a uh, place that's kind of unfamiliar to them, but anyway, as I was sitting there, there were a lot of teenagers there, and I was sitting on the back row with a lot of teenagers. And so, anyway, during the service, the speaker called the teenagers to come down front because he wanted to pray for them. And, as like I said, I'm sitting on the aisle row, the aisle seat, uh, on the back row. And as he began to, as he spoke that, all of a sudden it was like this wind started blowing. And it's like, it was one of, the, I felt like it was one of those large fans that you see in, shops, you know, like garage shops sometimes, you know, the huge ones, I mean, the real big, big fans, and it was like my hair just blew out, you know, and everything as if I were standing in front of that fan, and I heard the sound of this wind as it just whooshed past me, and around me and over me, and I'm looking over my shoulder and around about me to see where the fan is, because I couldn't believe someone had turned this fan on, in the service, and especially it pointed directly at the people, and especially me sitting right there, and all the rest of the kids and all. And so anyway, as I turned around looking for this fan above and beside me and around me, there was no fan. And then I concluded that it was the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Holy Spirit, mm, as he rushed past me to go to the altar which was the direction in which it blew. So the teenagers all got up and went down to be prayed for, and mighty things happened. Um, just many things happened that night. But anyway, I just wanted to share that experience with you. I didn't see cloven tongues of fire, but I heard the rush of the mighty wind and felt the wind, and it was amazing. It was just amazing. And it didn't just happen just suddenly and stop. It happened and it continued until it reached the altar, praise God. So 
Anyway, that's exactly what the disciples experienced in their upper room experience. And I do want to point out that they were all in one accord. This makes a big difference when you're dealing in things of the Spirit, especially in a congregation. Um, if you have um, people that are unbelievers and people that just, you know, in your midst that are not believers, it, you sometimes will not experience the move of the spirit, spirit as much because it's just like when Jesus went into different towns and, and some towns he didn't, he didn't even perform healings or miracles. And when asked why, he said because, you know, their faith was too little. They didn't have any faith. They were unbelievers. So being an unbeliever can affect uh, the move of the Spirit in the way that you experience and other people too. So keep that in mind when you're in the congregation or alone at home, uh, when you're reading the Word. So if you want to experience the Holy Spirit and you have doubt and unbelief working in you, then that's things are not going to happen for you. It, it's just a matter of fact because doubt and unbelief is a counter counter act, action to faith because faith is belief and hope. So um, you will not experience the things of the, of the Lord when you have doubt and unbelief working in you. Um, in part one, I mentioned, excuse me, the baby in the beginning when they were, the babies talking to each other, and I'm talking about the little kids, you know, they're what, or maybe six months to a year old or something before they're able to communicate with us, and they are communicating in their own language. So, and until they're taught the language of their culture. So, I, I've thought about this so many times, and, you know, I'm just thinking that I wonder if we are all born with our language, our prayer language, or the language of the Holy Spirit, because when you think about it, in the beginning, when, like, when uh, Nimrod wanted to build the Tower of Babel, or Babel, whichever way you want to pronounce it, um, you know, all the people were speaking in the same language. And because they got into this mischief of trying to build a tower to reach into heaven, which was the same as like trying to exalt, uh, Nimrod trying to exalt his throne above God is what he was doing. Um, it's like the same thing. So God uh, came and by the Spirit, I suppose, and mingled their language where each person or each sect of people there had a whole different language suddenly and they could not understand each other in what they were saying so the reason God did this was to divide them up so that they could not conspire together in um, coming against uh, the throne of God I suppose in trying to exalt themselves above the Lord so I'm thinking you know that maybe we're born with this language and then we're taught to speak in our cultural language so, in speaking in tongues, or diverse tongues, I believe, being as it is the uh, language of the Holy Spirit that we're using, uh, we may not understand each other when we speak it, but the Holy Spirit understands it. And I believe that it is our language from the Holy Spirit that is given to us as our cultural language, but our culture being in heaven. So that's something to think about, and I, I kind of believe this has a lot to do with it, praise God. So the Holy Spirit just wants to teach us our heavenly language. So as we go on, the skeptics, of course, and this is, uh, you can read in James 1, 5 through 9, I believe, if you want to uh, read on some of the skeptics and how they feel, but um, the thing that keeps a skeptic mostly from receiving the gift of tongues is it even though they're Christian and they have uh, been born again and they have the Holy Spirit but be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire they a lot of them don't believe that and believe that it did stop with the apostles so mostly the people that will not receive the gifts this gift of diverse tongues and the interpretation and that sort of thing is because of their pride gets in the way um, a lot of people are just afraid to, um, you know, open their mouth and begin to speak in a language that's foreign to them. 
and so their pride gets in the way and then of course fear you know fear of what others will think and fear of those around them and just fear in general being bashful or shy or whatever it is um but it's it comes under the label of fear and then of course a lack of time in their prayer closet so unless we get rid of the pride get rid of the fear and spend much more time in our prayer closet and that doesn't mean you've got to go inside a closet it just means that you need to get alone with God, whether it just go out in the garage, go out in the car, go into another room, or just get alone with God. I love to go on the deck in the early evening uh, for my evening prayer, just before um, dusk, when the skies or the clouds and the sun are all changing the color of the clouds and just bask in the greatness and the beauty of God's heaven sitting out there just looking at the changes in the colors and the, the cloud movement. And, you know, I have many encounters that way with the Lord. So that's a wonderful place to be outside with nature all around. Praise God. Hallelujah. So anyway, um, when it when we talk about counterfeiting, uh, and last week I did say, you know, just don't be concerned with counterfeiting because, first of all, if you have discernment and you're walking in the gifts and you do know the Holy Spirit and you walk in this gift yourself, then, so, you know, no one can lie to the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit is inside of you, like he should be, and like and, and you're operating and administering the gifts that he has given you, then you're going to know that if someone's lying or not. You're going to know if the speaking in tongues is of God. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, as I said last week, because that's something that, um, you know, and, and especially in a congregation, because if the, if someone gives us a message in tongues and there are interpreters in the house, then if it's not interpreted, then most likely the message was not of God. So I, I just wouldn't be really concerned about that. But I did want you to know that, um, that, you know, the Holy Spirit can't be lied to. And if you want to think back to Ananias and Sapphira when they lied about the land and when we talked about the gift of discerning of spirits and how um, the Holy Spirit just knows. So just think, keep it in mind as well. Um, another thing on the interpretation, um, the interpretation, I don't know if I made this clear last week or not, but um, the sign of to, to for a person the reason a person would give a message in a congregation in tongues is if there are unbelievers present and that's about the only time so only the holy spirit knows when there are unbelievers present because he is the only one that knows the heart of the people so when a message is given there are most likely unbelievers present and um that you know if of course, there's going to be people there that will interpret. And if they are not, then the person that gave the tongues to begin with can interpret themselves. So you, you can look in chapter uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 23, I think it's 22 through 40, that will give you more of an understanding of what I'm talking about here. So, when you become uh, born again with Jesus and in Jesus, and you become a believer and begin to walk in the um, gifts of the Spirit, or begin to be fruitful and multiply, and as we talked about last, oh gosh, I can't remember now which gift that I've mentioned, the Beatitudes a lot. Um, then you're and what you become is you you become out of sin where you are no longer a slave to sin but you are now a, a bond slave really to Jesus Christ but you become this bond slave by choice it's not that you are in chains in fact that's when your chains fall off and you are no longer chained to the evil and sin of of the world so, just want to make that clear as well. I do want to mention that once you have been born again for a while, and you have laid your life down for for Jesus, and things you, there's things in your life that change, and you do uh, quit 
doing a lot of things you did before because you just don't want to do them anymore. There is a time that um, your faith can be tested and these same things will come back. And the Bible does tell us that, you know, if um, that the demons that were in us at one time before we were saved, when they leave us, that they will come back and see if they, uh, your house is swept and clean and able to, they're able, if, see if they're able to come back in and inhabit you again. So they will be coming back and when they come, if you let them in, they will come in and they will bring at least seven more. And that's scripture. You can look that up. I didn't look it up for you, so didn't realize I was going to go into it that much. But, um, just want you to know that when you're tempted and tested this way, that you can stand firm on your faith because a faith that can't be tested cannot be trusted. And I didn't come up with that saying, I wish I had. I heard a preacher say that one time. It just made such an impact on me because, you know, we are tested so much through our faith walk. So, and if you make it through uh, the testings, then your faith can be trusted. And, and people around you know that. So that if you're a person of faith, then if you're a person that can stand firm upon your faith. So when you're speaking in tongues, I want you to know that, um, getting back to that, it's, it is a faith walk. And you have to believe that this is the language of the Holy Spirit before you can really receive it. And so uh, it does take exercise in your faith. And one, there's a couple of good points that are I want to bring out about this. That when you're speaking in tongues, Satan does not know what you are saying. And so when you begin to ask God for different things and you don't want the devil to hear you or anyone else and you want it to be private between you and God, because when he answers you, you want to know that it came directly from him. You don't want a counterfeit coming in because if Satan can hear you, he can plant thoughts into your mind and when you have these other thoughts in your mind, sometimes you may not be able to detect or be able to divide or discern between whether it's God's voice you're hearing or if it's Satan's voice you're hearing because he is a counterfeit. And if you are not walking that strongly in the gifts yet, then um, there is the chance that you could be deceived and hearing the voice of Satan, and so in order to be sure that you're hearing from God, then you're not speaking with the understanding, you're speaking in the gift of tongues, in diverse tongues, where the Holy Spirit will take your prayer, and translate, and take it back to God, and then when your prayer is answered, then you can know that God knows your heart, and that it really, that He really did hear your prayer, and he really did answer it. And that the answer really came from God and nowhere else. So that's a good point there to keep in mind. And a definite good reason for using the gift of diverse tongues. The other thing is, is that Satan doesn't know your thoughts. So when you're voicing your, your thoughts out, he can take them and manipulate them. So you have to be very careful in your prayer time and, and the way that you do pray. I pray openly. I, I'm not afraid that Satan's going to hear me pray. I pray openly. I want him to hear me pray. I want him to hear me exalt the Lord God Almighty above all and above him and above everything. So I don't mind that. But if I have something of, that I really need an answer on without his influence or him hearing or being, being able to uh, interact somehow, then I definitely speak in tongues or I speak it under my under my breath inside my heart without him knowing it. Praise God. That way um, he has no influence. Um, I want to let's see. You can find some, you can read about this basically in First Corinthians two, one through sixteen, and I would say pay special attention to verses. 9 through 16. So that will give you a good idea of uh, what I'm speaking about now. Maybe in a little different wording, but it will be the same thing. So, once you are, um, you know, a bond slave to Jesus and no longer a slave to sin, 
um, you must come, of course, by the power of the cross, because the power of the cross is the power of God. And when we look at 1 Corinthians 12, 1, where all the list of the nine gifts are given, and we begin to apply them along with, say, Matthew 5, where the Beatitudes are. And, and we, of course, we discussed all this throughout the teaching of the nine gifts. Um, and I just want to kind of uh, refresh your memory on this. But in the beginning, I said that at the end of this teaching series, that you would be able to move mountains in your life. Well, if you take these gifts and the revelation knowledge that God will give you, as you apply them to your life, but and develop the attitudes. You must have the right attitudes, or you're not going to be able to exercise anything, really. You're not going to be able to walk in the gifts. You know, the fruits of the Spirit are not going to grow in you as they should. So, really, we need to develop the right attitude. And if you go to Matthew chapter 5 and begin to study the gifts of the Spirit, then you can see... Um, the right attitudes, and as you are in your faith walk and you read the scriptures, you turn to God in all that you do and make Him a part of your daily life and begin to ex and, um, desire the gifts and the fruits. God is going to be giving you those, th those things and Jesus is going to be changing you little by little as you grow in His grace and knowledge. So, I just you know, I just hope that you glean from this because it's so important in the day and time we're living in. You're going to be facing many trials and tribulations while before the real end comes. Uh, don't know when the rapture will happen, but it will, it should be soon because we're just seeing too many signs. All the prophets around the world are discussing these things and bringing things out in the open that we are uh, warnings and blow the trumpet warning and sound the alarm and that's what we're kind of doing now so just beware that these things are happening and if you don't know Jesus then ask him into your heart ask the Holy Spirit to draw you to him and if you lift up the name of Jesus all you prayer warriors then all men will be drawn unto Jesus praise God and that's our job right now is to be doing that so this is our last lesson and I guess what I would like to do now is just I want to thank End Time, Prophet, End Time News, Prophecy Coming to Pass Before Our Eyes. I want to thank Olga Castaneda and Linda Bartlett and uh, Author Patience Prince and so many others, Lenora and Christy and Jeff and just so, I mean, uh, Ted and Shane and Furman and uh, Emmanuel and so many others. And I'm sorry if I left your name out, but all of you have been so kind and and to me and loving me and I just want to thank you all for having me uh, in this teaching and to do this teaching and I hope that there will be more teachings in the future so I just want to say thank you and God bless you all and I just love you so much and thank you for the new friendships that I've developed on this group thank you for the group Olga for your time and for doing all that you do and we just ask God to bless this group as, as it grows. And it has. It has grown so fast and so much. So we keep Jesus in it. And that's what it's all about. So thank you. God bless you. And if I'll start a thread. If you want to get on the thread, then we can discuss this just a little bit more. So see me on the thread right after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for all the weeks of the study and preparation and all that we have been through. I thank you, Lord, for the videos that you have given me to put forth out there, Lord, for others to watch and enjoy and learn. And, Father, I praise you and give you honor and glory. And I just ask, Lord, that all these gifts and the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and the attitudes, Lord, be just firmly planted, Lord, in each part that listens and has eyes to see and ears to hear, and that they keep their hearts tuned in, Lord, to your voice only. And I ask, Lord, for an impartation of your gifts, Lord, to those that really want to receive it. And so I just speak it forth right now, Father God, to impart your gifts to those that have a willing heart and willing to receive. 
and Father, to help them learn to walk in them and to use them. And Holy Spirit, lead, guide, and direct them in their path, Lord God, as, as they go about using their gifts. I praise you. Give you honor and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Meet me on the thread.